Welcome back to the Beetle Moment Marketing Podcast. My name is Emily Binder. I'm here with my very special guest, John Andrews. John has 20 plus years of work in the digital marketing field. He helped build one of the first people as media platforms at Walmart called 11 Moms, and he founded Collective Bias, which was acquired by Inmar in 2016. John also teaches as an adjunct professor at NC State University, and he is the CEO of Photify, which is a community content creation platform. Hi, John. How are you doing? Hey, Emily. Thanks for, thanks for having me. It's nice to be here. Yeah. Uh, would love to talk more with you about your area of expertise, which is all things retail, shopping, marketing. And you recently wrote an article on LinkedIn called Retail Just Advanced Five Years. So everything about shopping, curbside delivery, consumer attitudes toward brands and shopping overall is, is what I'd love to really dig into with you. So tell me a little about kind of the points that you made in that article. For example, curbside is the winner of COVID. Sure. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I think um, what, what is interesting, it's kind of like watching a hurricane, right? So hurricanes are interesting because, you know, they form way out. Uh, it's kind of far off and you see it coming and you see it coming in a uh, week. You know, oh, it's still a week out. I got time. And then all of a sudden it's here, right? So this was a hurricane that basically moved, you know, off the coast of Africa and to the coast of the United States in uh, about a half a day. Right? And, and it, it was stuff that was already happening. You, you know, if you think about how, where retail was headed, um, there were a lot of retailers that were having a lot of trouble, typically people in the middle, you know, um, people who are in category, you know, category killers, which was the big thing in the late nineties and in 2000. So, uh, you know, if I just sell pet stuff, uh, I'm having trouble because uh, Amazon uh, sells pet stuff and Walmart.com sells pet stuff. And I may as well just get that stuff from them because it was easy. But what, what happened with COVID is it advanced what was probably going to happen in the next five years uh, or, or so uh, very quickly. And you're seeing that play out now. So we've seen what now uh, Penny's, um, Neiman Marcus. Um, Hertz, you know, I thought Hertz was really interesting. So, so you don't think of Hertz as retail, but Hertz is, you know, a, a company that um, had taken on a lot of debt. Um, had, had uh, you know, the trend was moving away. I, I think about when I think about Hertz, back five, six years ago, I probably rented 50 cars a year when I was traveling to stuff, you know. Um, I do not want to rent a car unless I absolutely have to now, you know, if that I'm just traveling because, somewhere. You know, from a, from a germ standpoint or um, it, it's kind of, it actually, but, but it had nothing to do with COVID, but I didn't even think about that. Yeah. But yeah. Even, even yeah. now, but what's a double whammy but, now? Well, I just didn't want to, because it was, it, that is productive time. Think about when you fly into, um, Austin, right? So you're flying into South by Southwest, right? And I can rent a car, which means I have to go to the Hertz factory and, you know, do the whole dance and whatever. And then I'd have to drive to my hotel. I'd have to find my hotel. I'd have to do you know, all the things. I'd have to park my car. That would cost me money. And then I'd have to take it back. Yeah, it's um, crazy. All, all of that time in an Uber is productive time that, is, that, that I could use to work, to call people, to goof off. I don't know, whatever, <laughs> something besides driving a car. And I think shopping, you know, in March, um, the, the statistic was about a third of U.S. households tried grocery pickup, right? Um, the month before, that was less than 10%. So back to the kind of the hurricane analogy, people knew it was coming, but we had some time. You know, if you were a grocer, you had time. Walmart absolutely crushed their their first quarter, which is the February, March, April um, quarter for them, uh, because they had invested so much in the past two years of getting pickup and curbside, you know, pickup right. And they had rolled pickup out, you know, fortunately for them to like, I don't know, 4,000 stores or something, which is, you know, now a majority of, of their stores in the U.S., um, they, this, this was the perfect opportunity for them. 
and it kind of stinks for a lot of people. You know, a lot of people are saying, well, you know, Dick's sells the same stuff as Walmart, but they were shut down. Well, Walmart sold groceries, right? So, you know, you think about the competitors. So in a lot of places, Walmart was a, a, an essential business. Dick's was not. And while it may not be fair, it accelerated what was what was already not a great environment for Dick's anyway, right? Because it just was so much more convenient. If I need something from Dick's, I'll just get it from Amazon. I mean, it, it, not because I don't like Dick's, but just because I don't want to go, you know? Right, right. Yeah, the curbside pickup thing, I think the, the companies that invested in that earlier and not in the moment of the fire drill obviously have right. come out ahead with it. You can't just turn around and then create this infrastructure and train people, <laughs> you know, yeah. at the 11th hour. So I, HEB, which is a regional grocer here in Texas, this is really mm-hmm. impressive, actually. Uh, normally, I would get groceries from Whole Foods, Amazon, Prime Delivery, and yep. I never did HEB curbside pickup before. There's an HEB just down the block from me, but I would have sure. Whole Foods come deliver my stuff because, you know, it's, I, like, I like Whole Foods for many reasons. But I've been doing all HEB curbside because Amazon couldn't keep up with demand. There, was, like, there were two slots for delivery. You'd, ha- you'd have to go in at 1 a.m. This was like in the last six weeks. You, you'd be like, just if you get it at 1 a.m., you might grab the next spot for two days. Yep. You know. But HEB had this whole like, crisis preparation plan in place. They had already gone through this with, I think it was um, the virus. What was the last time around with SARS? Oh, SARS. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they, they like had their glass shields all like in the storage room, ready to go at the counter, uh, just bring them back out. So and their curbside is pretty good. The tech is not as good as Amazon, but they're here, they're local, they're ready. And it's like, you can get it in an hour. I, I, I think that's the math everyone's doing. So now some percentage of your wallet share is going to go to HEB that was not going there oh, prior. A lot of it. A lot of, and then no. on top of it, you've got certain credit card bonuses for grocery, like the Chase. Right. This is not an ad for Chase, but I'm big into credit card points. Chase Freedom, the plain Freedom, the free one, has 5% bonus UR points on grocery this quarter. Wonderful timing. HEB qualifies. Yeah. Whole Foods Amazon Prime delivery does not qualify as a grocery category. And that's not a huge, I mean, I don't know the percentage of co- customers that care about that. Like, it's huge to me. That dictates where I'm buying things each quarter. But I think I think that's the math, right? So so if you're a retailer, there are all these subsets of stuff that is not to your point. The number one reason people shop grocery is geography, right? You sh- most people shop the grocery nearest their home, right? It, it's just it's just how it works out, right? So real estate was the deciding order winner for for grocery, right? Um, now. You know, to your point, I, I, we use Amazon uh, Prime now at our office because it, uh, it combines Amazon, so, you know, office supplies, stuff we need, and Whole Foods, you know, fresh stuff. So for our office, we could order all our snacks and all our stuff. It's two-hour delivery. It's free. I'm like, why would anyone not do this? I mean, this is, you know, but – we haven't been into the office in three months. So I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it's a totally different world now. And we, we do the same thing. We shop Harris Teeter, which is a a Kroger banner. Right. Um, And one of the things we really like about it is because we get these dumb gas points. Right. Yeah. And they're not dumb because, you know, you, you, it's like the lottery. You, you enter your, you know, we just enter our phone number at VP, right? Yep. And you get from, I don't know, a couple cents off a gallon to a buck a gallon, depending on how much you've spent in groceries. And, you know, my wife, my wife is like, oh my God, I saved 80 cents today. So I like filled, you know, whatever. And it's like a, it's a, it's a win. So there's this, there's this whole subtext to shopping. It is not about necessarily the place itself, right? But all this other stuff that's going on, your credit card points or whatever, you know. But a lot of it becomes ease of use. Like, I don't have to think about that. I just get that because I shop there. Yeah. 
So you're talking about the importance of location, but something else that you mentioned that I thought was spot on in your article, you said, while other retailers, we're talking about Nike here, while other retailers mm -hmm. could only hope to focus on deals and support communication through their e-commerce channels, Nike was actually supporting people in their need to stay healthy and fit. Nike's playing the long game, which likely involves all of its retail coming under its own control. What were you talking about there? Yeah. You know, I, I watch Nike. Nike is one of the, the companies that I think um, is perfectly managing this transition to total digital retail. And, and digital retail is pickup. You know, Walmart, when Walmart announces its, uh, its pickup number, I mean, its e-commerce number, pickup is in that number. So people see a 74% growth. They think, well, online, no, that's pickup. Um, Nike has been playing this long game. I think of understanding that eventually it's just going to sell all products direct. Like Nike is going to be a direct, it, it will not, you know, Foot Locker, uh, uh, Coles, anybody that carries whatever, you know, form of Nikes is, is not going to exist in their ecosystem because they, you know, that's really a costly way to do business for one thing. You know, so, so Nike is selling, uh, you know, at a wholesale value to those folks. And then they're reselling. So Nike's missing 30, 40 points of margin on, on an average pair of shoes, maybe more, you know, um, Nike can do a lot of great marketing and, and great uh, connectivity to you for 30 to 40% more in value. So I've bought probably actually I'm, I'm kind of, I'm on um, door, doorstep standby because I, I know I've got a couple pairs of Nike shipping. So I've bought my last now five pairs of, of shoes of Nikes from Instagram. Um, and it's, it's really weird because I'm not an Instagram shopper. I can't think of really anything else that I kind of buy on Instagram. I'm not on Instagram shop, you know, but Nike is using its direct understanding of its data to perfectly market to me stuff it knows that I'm interested in. So Nike has a shoe called the 270. Um, it's got the encapsulated air just in the heel. Um, it's a, and sometimes they'll have special colorways that you can't buy in store or whatever. So they become collectible and stuff. Nike will drop that shoe in my Instagram feed. Um, and it's not incessant. It's not like a thing that, like, oh, fuck, like, leave me alone, you know, but it's, it's more of a, wow, this is about John's purchasing cycle every two months or whatever. I might buy a new, new pair of, of tennis shoes. And so we're going to hit him with a, a per, and I can buy it, transact the whole thing within the, the Instagram frame. Right. Um, yeah. And, and I, and I like, wow, like they really get it. And if I was Foot Locker, I would be terrified. Because the more that they do that, the more they know about my purchasing habits, where Foot Locker just has to go, hey, I think you're this kind of shopper and whatever. So, um, hey, we have a sale that's 30% off today. Well, no kidding. You have a sale that's 30% off um, every day. Right? You know? mm. And by the way, you send me an email to tell me every day. You know, So it's, it's that whole push marketing versus really, I think, being able to use first party data because I'm buying this through my Nike account, they know exactly what I bought, right? And they know exactly who I am, what my, what's in my, you know, so that it, it's, it's just a, it's a way that I think many brands are going to go. Um, Nike has just been, I think on the forefront of, of driving there. Well, if these brands are smart and capable, but what you're describing is almost an Amazonian level of knowledge, particular yeah. to shoes for this, right? But I mean, so many brands, even, even the DTCs, it's hard to get people in their ecosystem because like you described with your office ordering Prime, it's here in two hours, my credit card is yeah. loaded. Like that one click to pay patent, huge, huge for the next 20, 30 years. It's super difficult. You know, and, and I, I don't envy anybody in, in retail today because I think the margins are super thin, which is another reason I think Mike, Nike wants to be there because it, it's like, okay, we may as well make the money from our shoes. 
Um, but I, I, I just think it's really, really hard to have that view, that total view of a customer. And, you know, everybody is super excited about the ability to target using all this data we have, right? The problem is most of it's third party data and third party data in aggregate becomes exactly the same. Nobody has a, nobody has an advantage. So my only ability to market to you, if I'm, I'm relying just on third party data becomes um, a commodity. And so I'm forced into, I have to do everything as a sale or an offer or as a come on, you know, and it becomes really annoying as a shopper because I don't need anything from Nike most of the time. Stop mm -hmm. selling me stuff, right? And then, you know, I thought what they did with the Nike app, which was, hey, we have a subscription app where we have all these classes and stuff. And the way we can help you in COVID is just to give that away for free. So you can work out at home, right? Yep, yep. That, so that's now, what caught my eye was the, you were talking about the content in the app, yep. the workout at home. And that's and a branding they, play, right? Well, it's a branding play, but think about it. It's also adding to their data stream. Yeah. Like, because they said, oh, um, you know, Emily took all of our running classes, right? But she didn't take yoga and she didn't take uh, uh, bi uh, bicycling or whatever, right? Yeah. So now, okay, well, Emily's a runner, right? <laughs> she runs, you know, she runs three days a week and runs this bar and whatever, their ability to market to you, and, and by the way, we know she bought these eight pairs of shoes in the last two years. Uh, their ability to market to you just became exponentially greater in, in a way that's relevant to you, creating content about running versus, hey, Emily, here's a new running shoe. You know, okay, great. <laughs> I mean, it's just, a, it's, it's a weird thing. And I don't know, do you remember... It's, I mean, it may have been a year ago now, but it, it not in, in the not too distant future, Nike removed, you know, it had a store level, you know, storefront deal with Amazon and it killed that deal. Right. And they had gone into it just a year before. And I think they were doing the same math going, why would we give Amazon our shopper data versus keeping it ourselves? And I think a lot of brands are having to make that decision, yeah. you know, so you were saying about Nike that they have all of this data and that they can get people kind of on this cadence of, okay, no, you're a runner. So you have two more months till you're going to need new shoes or whatever the, the cadence says. Yeah. The thing that surprised me about it, and first you said, I'm not an Instagram shopper, but then you said, but I did buy these Nikes off of Instagram. Yeah. Uh, so this reminded me, there's some really interesting research out, Edelman's Trust Barometer, they just released this, and Kantar Research came out to, just in the last month, with stats saying that public favorability toward advertising was 25% in December of 2018, but in 1992, okay. that figure was 48%. So trust in advertising is an all-time low, like abysmally low, lower than it ever was before. And so... How is that, how does that kind of play into, you know, brands succeeding on things like Instagram advertising? It, it's a great question um, because I, I think that there's a trusted media challenge going on everywhere, right? And it, it's because we're transitioning, I believe, I mean, this is just my opinion. So take that for what it's worth. I believe, you know, media is paid for by advertising, or at least it has been. Right. If you think about how we set media up, you know, uh, I have a great conversations about people are like, oh, well, Fox and CNN and they do all this stuff. And I'm like, Fox and CNN are media properties. They make money by keeping people watching. And they both realize that it is easier to keep people watching who are angry and yelling at their TVs than just telling people the news. Right. Uh, you know, and, and I, I didn't, I, I never clicked on that until I, I read a great story about CNN's early founding is they quickly realized that no one would watch the news for 24 hours. Right. Yeah. So, so they had to do things they, to do, to do that. And then Fox just improved on that model. Right. And I don't care which, what your political views are, it doesn't matter. The reality is CNN and Fox are, our media companies built on advertising 
that need people to be engaged and mad is engaged for some people, right? For, for percentage of people. And, and they watch religiously because, it, you know, and they, so they have advertisers. So it's a long way to say, I think that the, um, we accepted ad driven media for years, you know, I mean, it was how, how it was done. We transferred that model to digital and we still try to do the same thing. And people are like, wait a minute, no, no, I'm not on Instagram to, to constantly be sold something, right? I'm on Instagram to scroll and see what my friends are doing or see whatever I'm into on Instagram. And I, I, I really like how Instagram um, uh, curates stuff. I love that I can go in discovery mode on Instagram on anything, right? And you click, um, um, I like I like sailboats. So I click one sailing Instagram, which is in my discovery. And then I just get this stream of sailboats, right? And stuff. Um, but then I get goofy uh, ads in that thing, right? And, and I think people will figure it out where I will get more sailing stuff for stuff I need to buy. But I, I think it breaks trust when you constantly are getting bombarded because people are trying to figure out just how to sell you stuff, which is kind of the point of all advertising and it pays for the freight. But now that I've got easy options to not get ads, I don't know if you pay for YouTube red or whatever it is, but not yet, but I'm getting, I'm so close because it's killing me. I I forget who said it. Um, Uh, and it, it's kind of a provocative statement, but somebody said in the, in the future, only who's, who's quote is it? in the future, only poor people will yep. watch ads. Yep. Because That's true. If it's, five, if it's five bucks a month for YouTube to not get any ads, sign me up. I'm in. I, 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 the only thing I don't understand is we have YouTube TV, which I dearly love because it's super flexible and cheap to get basically all TV. Um, why they don't just give me an option to, you know, add that to my service because I log into YouTube TV with my Gmail address. Like you got all the info, just charge, charge me five bucks. Mm-hmm. They, and I don't, and I'm, I, you know, it's just dumb, but yeah, I, I think, I, I think media is going through kind of the same problems as retail and, and stuff is trust is, you know, I don't need media to tell me stuff. I can go find it on my own, which is why I'm such a proponent of content creation, right? Right. It is is make content about running and I will find it if I am a runner, right? Or if I want to be a runner or or whatever. Um, Don't just make ads about selling running stuff. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's the crux of good content marketing. You were talking earlier about the email marketing portion, which sent like Foot Locker sending you emails and saying, oh, we're having a 30% off sale again, but you don't need new running shoes yet. How often do you? Not that often. That's the same thing with so many considered purchases. So really to be successful in marketing those things, you do need data and you do need more insight. Um, I, I think... Well, and there's so many like the promotions tab, which is some, yeah. I mean, I am surprised people don't talk about this more often because email marketing is still such a, a major driver of e-commerce, but Gmail has put this barrier that makes it pretty difficult. I love the, I love as a consumer, I love as a consumer. Stuff. I love it. I'm not an email marketer anymore, but I remember like sending emails for budget rent a car and having to try to figure out the easiest, quickest way to instruct people, move <laughs> us to the inbox. That means drag right, it over right. or star it, like depending on desktop or mobile. And this is silly because these are consumers who raised their hand and said, I want to hear from you. And Google right. is saying, nope, you need to go search. Nope. We, can, we can serve you an ad when you go search for Foot Locker on Google. You don't even realize right. there's an email in your promotions tab from them. <laughs> it, you know, but as a marketer, you realize it. And I, I think, you know, and I, uh, Ted, you know, my business partner, Ted Rubin, uh, we talk about this a lot together. It's somebody's job at most companies to drive revenue through email marketing, right? That is Today, not necessary. Yep. Yeah. I, I mean, it's a thing. I, it's know, still a job title. Like I'm an email marketer. 
Not for long. I'm an email marketer and, and their paycheck is based on, did I drive more revenue this quarter with email than last quarter? So the natural response to that and the Google promotions tab, I think you, you encapsulated perfectly, is send more email, right? I, I literally get a Foot Locker <laughs> email every day, like every, and it's, it's promotion. It's because of the promotions tab, right? At some point, it, they'll hit me on the right day and it'll break. It doesn't. I mean, I've never ordered a pair of shoes from, from Foot Locker um, the, because I just, I'm not, I'm not going to. If I, if I ever buy shoes from Foot Locker, which I do, I'm going to go into their stores because I want to see and touch. And I actually want to understand from their store associates who are usually teenage sneakerhead kids that are really into sneakers, like what's hot right now. Not, not, you know, I want to, I want to, I, I want to be an old dude with cool shoes <laughs> you know, that, that the teenagers are like, wow, I can, I can, got cool shoes. Not, not like the production shoes that I'm going to get, you know, if I just, order the regular stuff <laughs> yeah know. yeah i get that so so why is there this disconnect where so we, we see instagram advertising is it's still a hell of a deal it's very cheap yeah. facebook advertising instagram same company why are we seeing that that works and then you also still have so much email marketing and the thing is you'll notice a lot of those instagram ads they say well give us your email and you'll get 10 percent off the purchase because they're always still trying to get that email address sure but that's well, your, what is it? That's what your, is it worth in five years? Like, why you, you is that a thing? It, you said it earlier, right? So that's the that is you have given the 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 customer has given they raised their hand. Email yeah. me. Well, they, yeah. well, they they really kind of did, but they really just got ten percent off. They right? want the coupons. <laughs> they give them the throwaway email, right? Right. Right. Yeah. My that's my. My, uh, my, personal, my personal email address, I tell people, I'm like, please don't, don't share it. There. Well, no, I don't care. I public, it's, on my, it's on all my stuff. Like, oh, it's oh, that one. That, okay. the, but I, I just caution people. They're like, oh, I see. I, you know, I emailed you. I never heard back. I'm like, man, I don't look at that thing. Like, yeah. I'm so, I, like, I'm sorry, but it is functionally... In their it's impossible. It's, it's a mess. It's it's just too like I was I was trying to keep my business email just pure and not on any Good lists. Luck. Right. Yeah. And then of course my mom invites me to Grove Collaborative and she shares my Beetle Moment email. I'm like, mom, I'm screwed now. Like there's it'll Don't. never be pristine again. It's on a list. It's going. Yeah. It's going. Uh, That's why I always put like Emily plus then the name yeah. of the company. So that I know like who's sharing my things. Oh, that, yeah, that's smart. That, uh, yeah, uh, this is the tip. Anyone who doesn't know this, if you have, let's say your email is um, john at gmail.com. You can write john plus footlocker at gmail.com. You'll still get the email, yeah. but you'll know that's the one that footlocker just shared with sport mart. The next time you get a sport mart, you're like, I didn't I sign up it. for this. Right. Oh. Well, and that's the, Talk that's email. okay. So the, a great, you know what? That's a, that's actually, I hadn't thought about that. That's a great, that's a great answer to why people don't trust media. Mm. Full Locker makes money off that list, right? Yeah. So they sell that list to related industries, to other people, whatever. You know, I, I, we, get, we get these at Photify. We're like, hey, do you want to buy an email list? I'm like, no. <laughs> like, uh, what am I going to do with that? Right? Do you want to buy a spot in the yellow pages? It's, uh, no, exactly. <laughs> it's not, it's not as no, old as that, but it's like, what is this worth? I don't know. It's just sending, That's sending mail to list. That's it's the funny. Opposite, uh, opposite of modern marketing. It's opposite of content marketing, opposite of marketing people who raise their hand. It's like, but we're, we're still holding on to it, right? Like we're, yeah. we're, we're all still, um, and, and I gotta, you know, I gotta say I was a, a Facebook, uh, uh, not hater, but um, I, I was a Facebook skeptic for so long, mm -hmm. and I know empirically there is not a better marketing vehicle used correctly than Facebook today. I I, I believe, and it pains me to say that, yeah. But I know when we use it, we get um. We, we just get measured results. We don't use it very often, 
but but you know when we um, we we have enterprises that use Photofy, they use private version of Photofy to give give their folks um, uh, templates and things to create content with. So folks like Remax and Lifetime Fitness and and it, you know p people who want their employees, partners, contractors, whatever, making content with their assets, right? Beautiful looking and content that's on brand. That's on brand, but still in their voice. Right. It's mm -hmm. not just it's not just reposting um, whatever the company has made. Uh, and that's a subtle difference that I think makes a lot make, is very important. But um, what what we know is when we when we have a new partner and we want to quickly expand the the growth of users of, of that partner. Facebook wins. Right. Yeah. Because oh, usually okay. we're doing that connected to a convention. All right, so I can easily target people who work for Remax who are traveling into the convention city that I'm not bothering anybody else. Yeah. And you know it's perfectly targeted. I'm going to the Remax convention. I'm, a, I'm in Vegas uh, between these dates uh, or Chicago, wherever. And I, I, it, it's 100% perfect targeting. Yeah, you know, I you're right. You're right. And no, I am, no a, I am a self-identified Facebook hater. I will say, I, <laughs> and I have been for years. It's, that it's company a is a serious <laughs> problem. Um, in so many but regards, works. but you're right. You're right about it. It's, it's the best deal in advertising. You can't it's beat the, the targeting. Be, it's the best deal in advertising. And, and the, you know, the same with Google for actually for the reasons you mentioned. It, it cuts out a lot of the, the ch you know, what I like about Google is um, it, it so perfectly gives me what I'm looking for. I mean, it's Google's job, right? You know, and, and gets rid of crap. And, and as people try to game it, it gets rid of their games. And, yeah. I, you know, I was looking for, I'm planning a little road trip with, with a good friend of mine. We're going to take this big, big uh, long road trip so I'm, I'm booking hotel rooms right google aggregates every single place i could buy a hotel room from right and basically says okay well here's what expedia and whatever or the hotel itself or whatever it has and then google says or just book it through our engine right because mm. it, it's already just cut cut out all the, the bs and, and it makes it now I use Expedia because it's got a functionality that I like, but I could just as easily use Google and, and to our shopping experience discussion earlier, I probably will in the future, just because it's less friction. It's, it's yeah, easier. It's less friction and it's the behemoth brand that has everything else already in their ecosystem about you. Same yep. as Amazon one click shopping. And I would say Apple is coming. <laughs> Oh. to compete on the healthcare, but Amazon could even do a better job of it as far as like Alexa being your health assistant, that virtual 100%. all knowing like, oh, I see how your diet is. I noticed in your voice this morning, you sounded depressed. Oh, is that because of the call you made last night? Perhaps you might want a massage later today. I've already booked it. Duplex. Yeah. That's where it's going. And then well, the, there's like, advertising in that because everything's predictive. It, that's, you know, that's a, it's a really great question. And, and you, I mean, you're, a lot of your work in that space, I, I find really intriguing just because I think, well, oh, look, Alexa's listening to everything that we're doing. Uh, so, so is Facebook and Instagram, John. Big time. I, I, no, no, 100%. But, <laughs> yeah. but, but she is in my kitchen, right? We've got a, yeah. a show in our kitchen, you yeah. know? And so when I get up in the morning, my routine is I, I come down to make some, you know, lemon water or whatever, you know, we're, we're doing... Getting and, alkaline, uh, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, give me my, uh, give my daily update, right? By the way, she knows what. To your point, she knows what time I got up, right? She probably knows how much I drank last night. <laughs> she was in the her. kitchen. She might know. Oh, she's right beside where I pour the glasses of wine. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, she's counting. You know? like, probably. They can calibrate right? that. They got it. Um. It, well, but she would know a reorder if I ordered from Whole Foods or, or mm -hmm. something. But yeah, I mean, there's there's all this data that we're just we're just handing over, you know, and used well, it doesn't bother me one iota, right? To your mm -hmm. to your point, 
think how many lives Alexa, Facebook, Google, whatever could save just by giving you simple health advice based on what you're doing every day. You know, if you were, if you would listen, right. And, and not, I'm not talking ads now or anything like that. I'm just talking about simple, Hey, you know, you're not getting enough sleep. Oh my God. The, the privacy people just lost their minds, but the, this knows whether you get enough sleep or not. Right. Especially if you're wearing that and, and most people probably don't get enough sleep, you know, it's and true. that one simple thing will improve your health probably more than any diet, <laughs> you know, cutting down your alcohol, anything, whatever would do is just get more sleep. Yeah. And know? paradoxically, one of the culprits that's is making this? us sleep less <laughs> is that exactly. Yeah, it's the screen. Yeah. So, oh man, I could keep talking about this forever with you. Um, maybe we'll do another episode sometime, but for now, sure. let's wrap this up. And I wanted to ask you, you have excellent taste. Are you listening to any podcasts or reading any books lately that you would recommend? Yeah. So um, I, I, I want to say Joe Rogan, but that's just so overdone, but I just really love, uh, you know, I, I listen to um, both of his conversations with Elon Musk a couple of times, just because they were then they're, they're both two and a half hours plus long, but you know Elon's an interesting guy. But no, I listen to a, a guy called uh, named Jack Monson, who has a, a podcast um, called Social Joey that is uh, all about franchising, and it's in a business that that we're we're you know that's that's a we're a business where a lot of our partners are coming from. So I. I'm trying to increase my knowledge and he talks to franchisees or franchisors all the time about the things that they're doing. So that's very niche, but if you're a franchise, uh, that's a, that's a real good, uh, real good spot. And the book that I read that probably makes, has made the biggest impact on, on my life. And it was a good book to read. I read it right before COVID started actually is uh, in Chigo Ichi. And it's this Japanese philosophy of living in the moment moment and the no moment matters except this one right now so what happened in the past doesn't matter because you can't do anything about it what's going to happen in the future is going to happen so you need to live in this moment and appreciate i don't know the breeze blowing outside you know it, it's really it's a be in the moment and it's also um a book about putting randomness into your life so there's an exercise about um, choosing where you're going to go to dinner with, you know, your partner or spouse or, or whatever, and taking a die. And, and so you pick six places that you, you know, you, you're not, gonna, you know, I don't eat seafood. So seafood places aren't going to be on the list or whatever. Right? And uh, um, so you roll the die and you, you, wherever it says to go, you go. And then you do the same thing with the menu. You pick six things you know you would eat and you roll the die and you eat that. Right. And it's just this simple putting randomness into your life that, uh, I don't know, it's, it was interesting. Um, I had uh, seen it, uh, Scott Monty had, had recommended it and was talking about it. And I, a uh, big fan of Scott. So I, um, um, I said, yeah, all right, I'll read it. And uh, actually I didn't read it. I've got it on audible, but uh, the lazy it's the uh, friction, <laughs> friction free way to read. So uh, yeah. You're reading, you know, I, I just saw, you know, I'm reading all these stats about advertising trust. The other one I saw was Americans read fewer than four books per year on average. And 25% mm -hmm. of Americans, I think it was, haven't read a book in the last year. So at least you're mm -hmm. reading-ish. I mean, yeah. listening is reading. So well, I, I read a real book. It's a, it's a good, you know, pre-bedtime or early morning thing to do. Yeah, without the blue but, light, like a real book. But Audible... Uh, Audible speeds that up, and it's great for all your dead time, right? It's not an so. ad for Amazon here, but it obviously. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> may as well. well be. Everything yeah, may so. as well be, right? Well, so then, Yeah, next time we talk, we should talk about Twitch, because I think that's the, the media uh, network of the future. It's insane. Oh, yeah. I'm following, yeah. uh, I, I watch, watch this guy all day on Twitch now called Wall Street Booyah. Okay. And... So Twitch is a gamer network, yeah, and um, not designed for people to talk about financial stuff. But 
This is the great, well, check it out if you get okay. a chance. It, I'm going to put a link to that in the show notes at beetlemoment.com slash podcast. Anyone who wants to check mm -hmm. out John's podcast book or Twitch, Wall Street Booyah, Rec, that's where so, it'll be. So uh, it's, it's insane. And, and I, when I watch it, I feel like watching, you know, 10, 15 years ago, looking at influencer marketing or something else and going, oh shit, like this is, this is a thing. This is going to be a thing. And of course, Amazon bought them. Amazon saw that two years ago or whatever and bought them, but it's stupid. So uh, you'll, you'll stupid good. I'm, I'm speaking a 14 year old uh, teenager stupid slang. Good. Stupid. Um, Facebook Giphy acquisition also yep. prescient, prescient big time. You know, I thought so too. And I, and we had just integrated uh, Giphy into Photify. So you can, you can add dumb gifts and and it was so funny because a lot of our team was like why would anybody want to do that and i'm like well, i don't know a lot of people would give some stuff but they do <laughs> so, you know why I, it's because we're trying to convey body language and tone of voice in these text-based tap type and swipe mediums that don't have yep. the vocal element that's why we're using emoji exclamation points gifs gifs we're trying to make it sound more human or be you know to, and it's much more, it's much more effective intimate yeah. It's much more effective. I'm in a, um, like, I'm in a uh, private Facebook group that's just for Duke and Carolina fans that talk smack to each other. And I only reply with, with gifts to any, yeah. when any, any Carolina fan says <laughs> It's a whole new language. Just, <laughs> it's awesome too, because it says so much more. And, sure. You know, you can, you can just, I, I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's a new way to, yeah. it's a new language. So. Okay, I got to cut us off. Um, John, All right. let people know where they can connect and follow you. John at Potify is uh, my email. You can uh, don't share it. I know everybody will know. Uh, and I'm Katadin, K A T A D H I N, on most social channels. Okay, well, John Andrews, this has been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks, Emily. <laughs>